Hello viewers, welcome to our channel, Upper Public School, Kalpurki, and I am Ajay Dutt, your biology teacher. So, my dear students, in the previous class, we have finished a chapter that is how do organisms reproduce. So, in today, start with a new chapter, heredity and evolution, the fourth chapter. Okay, so because of the revised syllabus. We are going to deal with the partial part that is half of the part of the chapter that is only heredity. So students, before dealing with the chapter, so let us first know about heredity, variation and genetics and various terminologies used in this chapter. Okay, so first starting with the heredity and evolution so we are omitting the evolution part of this chapter and we are only dealing with the heredity part that is we are mainly concentrating on some of the key terms used and also we are going to deal with the mendelian genetics mendel's contribution towards genetics okay so heredity so what does this term heredity mean heredity means it is the mode of transmission of the traits from one generation to another generation. Heredity means mode of transfer of the information, genetic information from one generation to another generation. The transfer of characters from one generation to another generation. Characters can also be said as traits. Characters can also be said as traits. That is in the form of genetic informations okay in form of genes so what are genes genes are the units of heredity so do not worry about those things so we are going to make a list of several terminologies which we are going to use and we are also knowing the meaning or definitions of those terminologies so heredity so under this chapter heredity we, have, we are going to deal with the certain concepts by which you will be knowing that why do you look similar to your parents and all those things. Okay. So in the previous chapter, we already know that reproduction. So what was the actual need for reproduction to continue their life and the second uh, to continue their to continue their generations and second one is the, to transfer the information from one generation to another generation. That were, that were, the, those two were the most important facts or those, 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 those two were important aspects. In reproduction what happens, there is multiplying number of organisms. Okay, there is, there, there is a study multiplying number of organisms in a particular species. So when they are multiplying the offsprings or the young ones, or the next generation means same. The progeny also means the same. The next generations or the young ones or the progeny means one and the same. Okay. They are similar to their parent, but they are not identical. They are similar to their parent, but they are not identical. Okay. The individual born to parents may be identical. So you always be, you will be having uh, doubts like, sir, twins are identical. No, they are identical to some extent, but they are not 100% exact copies. They are not 100% exact copies. You can find a degree of change between the twins. Okay, M little bit minimum differences will be there and it must be there. That is essential for differentiating that he is an individual and the next one is the different individual. Okay. If you are brother and sister, both are the product of your mother and father, you are not similar to each other, but, uh, but the basic body designs remain similar. That is like you're having two eyes, a nose and two ears and all those things. But you are ident but you are not exact copies. Okay, they are not Xerox copies. Okay, you may be similar to your brother or sister, but you are not exact identical. 
even the twins are not exact identicals of each other okay so this is all because of the changes that is occurring from one individual to another another individual and the changes are nothing but the variations the changes are nothing but the variations so in offsprings the bo basic body design remains same whereas the certain features they differ and that is what is called as variation okay how do you define heredity heredity can be defined as the transmission of traits from one generation to another generation so transfer of genes from one generation to another gen generation or transfer of traits or transfer of characters from one generation that is from parent genera generation to offspring generation that is known as the heredity then what is variation we are going to deal with certain definitions i have already said that is certain terminologies which we are going to use the first one is heredity second one is variation like next is genetics then genes then dominant gene then recessive gene then allele then genotype phenotype okay so several like homozygous heterozygous so certain few more uh, definitions we are going to deal with okay so here it is you is that the mode of transfer of the traits generation so why am i telling you about all this terminology because i am going to explain you the concept on the basis of the terminologies and when i use this terminologies you must be very clear with the meaning or definition of those terminologies then only you can understand whole concept very clearly because of this important terminologies okay if i use what do you mean by genetics if i use the uh, word gene you must know what gene is if i say dominant gene you must know what dominant gene is what is the character of dominant gene and what is the character of recessive gene what do you mean by alleles what do you mean by genotype why what do you mean, mean by phenotype what do you mean by homozygous condition what do you mean by heterozygous condition all these things you must know okay so it would be better if you make a note of all these things while i am teaching you about these things so heredity is the transmission of traits from one generation to another generation then what is variation the variation is the changes occurring between two individuals that is from parent to offspring so how do you define the change how do you define this variation before defining the variation let me give you one of the example so you are the son of your father you are the son of your father you are similar to him but you are different in many aspects like complex but you are of dark complex okay your father may be of 6 feet height and you are just 4 or 5 or of 5 uh, and 1/2 feet height okay so there is change there is change between you and your father that is you are you are even something different okay you are somewhat different from your parents and that difference is nothing but the variation and that difference is nothing but the variation so how do you define the variation variation can be defined as the degree of changes occurring between parent generation and offspring generation is called as variation is called as variation okay so what differences you are having among you and your father you and your mother is that called as the variation the variation can be defined as the degree of changes occurring the degree of changes occurring between the individuals of same species or the degree of changes occurring between a parent generation and 
offspring generation can be said as a variation okay difference between dog and cat is not called as variation it is called as something else okay because they are of different species how can you measure a variation there okay it is not called as variation so variation is within the species variation means the changes occurring between your father and you or between your mother and you that degree is nothing but the variation the degree is nothing but the variation so last time i will define the variation variation can be defined as the degree of changes that occur between a parent generation and the offspring generation is called as the variation is called as the variation okay so next is genetics so what is this genetics genetics is a branch of biology it is a branch of biology and what is it dealing with this genetics is dealing with the study of heredity and variation together okay heredity plus variation together makes genetics that is the study of heredity variation together is called as genetics together it is called as genetics is it clear so genetics is a branch of biology which deals with the study of variation and heredity that is it is a branch of biology which deals with the study of heredity and variation how is the how is the traits transferred and what all changes are occurring okay together if you get the term genetics you get the term genetics that is genetics is a branch of biology which deals with the study of heredity and variation which deals with the study of heredity and variation then what are genes and what do you mean by gene so before knowing about the definition of the gene let us first know about the gene okay <clears throat> since the beginning of this chapter so i am saying you that the characters are transferred from one generation to another generation so how can it be transferred it can be transferred through reproduction it can be transferred through reproduction so during reproduction what happens the gametes or the sex cells they fuse the gametes or the sex cells fuse cells means of course they are having nucleus and of course they are having nucleus they will be having a chromatin material and that chromatin material is coiled into a thread like structure called as chromosomes and inside chromosomes we are having the double helical structure of dna and in that double double helical structure of dna we are having small segments or small sections and those sections are nothing but the genes so <coughs> ah suppose this is a gene okay where is this gene located this gene is located in the double helical structure of dna that is deoxyribose nucleic acid deoxyribose nucleic acid okay where is this gene located gene is located in the dna strand and where is this dna located this dna is located in the coiled structure called as the chromosome called as the chromosome where is this chromosome available where is this chromosome available this chromosome is available in the nucleus in a filamentous body like structure called as chromatin material okay so during cell division what happens i have already said to you in the ninth standard itself that this chromatin material is going to coil and turn into chromosome and on this chromo in this chromosomes we are having the double helical structure of dna and in this segments of and in this dna we are having the tiny parts or section or segments called as the genes so genes are called of heredity okay or they are called as the unit of heredity so through this genes only the information from one generation to the next generation is passed from the one in one from one generation to another generation the information is passed is that clear so genes are the 
segments of these are the segments of the dna dna are located in the chromosomes chromosomes are made up of coiled material called as chromatin material inside the nucleus inside the nucleus is that clear about the genes so how do you define genes now gene is the unit of heredity gene is the unit of heredity or you can simply define gene as okay you can simply define the gene as it is the section of dna it is the section of dna which is actually helping in the transfer of genetic information from one generation to another generation from one generation to another generation so this is what you have, you have understood uh, among these four definitions of heredity variation genetics and genes about the types of genes that is dominant gene and recessive gene dominant gene and <coughs> recessive gene so before dealing with the, the dominant gene and recessive gene before dealing with the dominant gene and recessive gene let me tell you about the types of genes that is for every character among the organism we have two genes okay genes are also called as alleles alleles are alternative forms of genes alleles are the alternative forms of genes for every character you have two chromosomes you have two genes i'm not uh, you, uh, uh, okay uh, we are having two genes one among them is dominant the other one is among the other one is recessive the other one is recessive i would like to give you an example suppose i always stress on one word that is you are the product of your mother and father that means you are having the combination of the genes from your mother as well as the father that is maternal side and paternal side so from the both sides you are having the in the form of genes that is in the form of genes is that clear so for every character such as height that is body length hair color skin complex skin color okay then voice then there are several characters several characters okay so facial expression this one uh, facial appearance and all those things so there are several characters within your body like your height hair color then skin then voice so there are say, like even the the eyeball color so all these are the characters all these are the characters and for all these characters we are having two genes okay we are having the two genes so for the body length height one character is we are tall and the other character is short or dark okay there are the two genes for one character that is body length okay if this t that is tall dominant gene so this gene is dominant in your body then you would be tall then you would be tall if g this this g this this gene is not dominant then this gene would express and when this gene is expressed you would be short you would be short okay so such as so in all the characters we are having two genes one from the mother side and another from the father side it is nowhere rule that the dominant one is from father no you some some see in some say some in some situations so your father's genes are dominant such as in case of height and all those things you get a height of your father because the genes of your father for the character length of the body is dominant so you are tall as him okay but your father is darker in complex your mother is fair in complex 
but you got the fair complex so in second case in skin color your mother genes are dominant because you are because of that you are fair in complex than your father that means in case of body length your father genes are dominant whereas in case of the skin color your mother genes are dominant there is no way rule that there is no way rule that only father genes are dominant or only mother genes are dominant but they are a combination in some cases father gene may be dominant in some cases okay so now so in such a way as in then we are going to deal with the next part you will be knowing about the certain characters and their alleles and their alleles alleles are nothing but the alternative alternative forms of genes are called as alleles for hair color so short and long so okay so these these i am just giving an example so some of them may be having very thin long hairs some of them are having very thick that is dense short hairs okay so this is also the alleles for the character hair okay hair color skin color voice okay even uh, even in case of uh, several characters like maybe a, a n number of characters for all these characters we are having two genes or two alleles one among them is dominant and the other one will be recessive the other one will be recessive is that clear so this is about the uh, genes okay next coming to the dominant gene and recessive gene so what do you mean by a dominant gene and what do you mean by a recessive gene dominant gene so what do you mean by dominant gene so dominant gene means suppose capital t always dominance is expressed in terms of capital letters and recessiveness is expressed in terms of small letters okay t t and small t small t so these are the alleles for the character height one is tall the other one is short is it clear one is tall and another one is short do not confuse the tall is represented by t and short is represented by yes no because both of them are the genes for one character that is height do not confuse every time okay so this is the allele for this is these are the genes for tallness and these are the genes for shortness okay so always capital letter denotes dominancy and small letters denotes recessiveness okay so the gene which expresses itself the gene which by suppressing its counterpart or by suppressing its partner so such a type of gene is known as dominant gene such type of gene is known as dominant gene so what is a dominant gene the gene which expresses itself by suppressing its partner by suppressing its partner so your chromosome has gene t and one more gene t okay one is capital t and another one is small t okay so capital t and small t are the these together make a gene and this gene is responsible for the character height this this gene is responsible for the character height okay so here what is happening this capital t is dominating the small t that means the small t remains within your body but it is not expressing itself but only the gene which is dominant is expressing itself so the gene which expresses itself by suppressing by suppressing the other gene is gene dominant gene means 
the gene which expresses itself externally by suppressing its counterpart it is known as the dominant gene it is known as the dominant gene so who amongst your brothers and sisters that is who among your siblings are dominant one who always gets first he will be the dominant one because he is not allowing others to get it he is not allowing others to get it so he is going and snatching everything over there that means he is dominant over the other siblings he is dominant over other siblings okay so the gene which is expressing itself by suppressing its partner gene is known as dominant gene then what do you mean by recessive gene this was about the dominant gene then what do you mean by recessive gene recessive gene is a gene which expresses itself only in the absence of dominant gene okay the gene which expresses itself in the absence of the dominant gene is known as a recessive gene a gene which is going to express itself only in the absence of dominant gene such a gene is known as the recessive gene such a gene is known as the recessive gene so whenever i say all the capital letters must come into your mind that is i am going to give you a pair of contrasting characters which uh, the grigor john mendel has found in the garden pea plant so there we would be knowing about the the characters and the respective alleles okay so always capital letters mean dominancy whenever i write capital t capital r capital y capital g all these things denote the dominancy that means if they are there they are only going to express okay they are only going to express then small r small s small t and all those things are going to express the recessiveness and only if capital r is absent then small r is going to express that is only in absence of dominant gene the recessive gene will going is going to express itself or else the recessive gene is not going to express itself it is not going to express itself is this clear to you is this clear to you then we would deal with the genotype and phenotype now so what is this genotype and what is this phenotype genotype is the sum of genetic makeup of an organism okay genotype is the genetic organisms within his body or within its body so that is called as the genotype so genetic composition of organism can be called as the genotype genetic combination of organism can be called as the genotype then what is this phenotype phenotype means <clears throat> the external visible expression of the genes is known as the phenotype so genes are going to express itself that means so if the genes are going to express among yourself that is if the gene for the character height you are going to show the character of tallness that means the gene which is responsible for this tallness is expressing itself and whenever the other person looks at me i'm visibly tall i'm visibly tall okay so that external appearance of expression is the expression of the gene is nothing but the phenotype is nothing but the phenotype what is genotype it is the sum of the genetic makeup of or genetic combination of an organism then what is this phenotype it is the visible expression okay external visible expression of an gene okay if i am having the gene of tallness within my body and it is dominant because of that i am tall today and you are all looking at me because of my genes are tall my genes are tall that doesn't mean genes are really lengthy no okay Now my genes are dominant for tallness so i am tall so i am tall this is about the phenotype then what is this homozygous condition homozygous condition means if alleles are similar then this is called as homo zygous condition this is called as homozygous condition if alleles are different then this is called as h 
heterozygous condition homozygous condition and heterozygous condition are the two types of conditions okay homozygous means both genes will be similar either they are tall either they are dominant or they may be recessive it is homozygous but in heterozygous one will be dominant and other one will be recessive the one will be dominant and other one will be recessive so homozygous condition both the alleles are similar both the alleles are similar heterozygous both the alleles are different both the alleles are different yes and heterozygous condition so i would like to wind up the class here only with a few concepts more it is to just make you very clear about this heredity so i'll just tell you something okay this is what you have learned in this today's class about heredity variation genetics genes dominant gene recessive gene alleles genotype phenotype homozygous and heterozygous conditions so next we'll deal with <clears throat> next we'll deal with the, the further concepts which i would uh, like to say you now only but before that i'd just like to clarify you all with the, some concepts see you are the product of your mother and father i say okay that is this sperm is going to fuse the egg when this both fuse together zygote is formed i am saying okay this zygote is the of one of the set of chromosome from your father side and one of the set of chromosome from your mother side so so mother side so half chromosomes from father that is from sperm half chromosome from your mother that is in form of egg so you have one set of chromosomes so you have one set of chromosomes that is 22 plus 1 chromosomes we are having in your body it is every cell has total number of 23 pairs of chromosomes out of 22 or the body chromosomes and one is the sex chromosome one doesn't mean single one one pair so totally you are 40 22 plus 1 it is 23 pair means 46 chromosomes in every cell in every cell okay so out of which 44 are body chromosomes okay xx denotes sex chromosome in case of females okay so in case of males 22 plus 1 why am i denoting plus 1 because this one is a sex chromosome as it is xx here okay so 22 pairs of body chromosomes plus one pair of sex chromosome totally equal to 23 that is 46 chromosomes okay in case of males it is 44 xy xy is a sex chromosome in case of males whereas in case of females it is xx is that clear so this we are going to learn in uh, under the heading sex determination but why am i teaching you this one here because to know that you are the combination of your mother and father that means for every character you have within you both your mother and father genes are responsible both your mother and father genes are responsible for that character that is the what the, the, the intention is my intention is to let you know okay so that means half chromosomes from your father side half chromosomes from your mother side so you are tall you are tall okay so for tallness or sorry you are you are you are just an individual and you have certain characters like you may be having height body color eyeball color then type of ear okay so all the features you are having all the features you are having 
for all these features one chromosome from your father side one chromosome from your mother side that is for length of your body one chromosome from father side another chromosome from mother side skin color same then type of hair same color of the eyeball same for every character one chromosome or one gene from father side you are having one gene from mother side you are having but they may be <coughs> dominant or recessive it is different matter it is different matter that means so you are the rightful or equal combination of your mother and father that is whatever your mother and father are contributing so they are contributing in equal terms that is in case of genes so for every character you have or for every character you exhibit both your mother and father genes are responsible so out of them one of one is dominant the other one will be recessive there is no rule that one of the parent is dominant the other one is recessive no you may be a uh, 75% of characters are from your father side but still 25 characters are from your mother side 25 characters are from your mother side got it so dominancy and recessiveness it differs it differs but genetic combination is 50% 50-50 both of them are contributing equally among those equally contributed genes 75 may be from your father side 25 may be from mother side sometimes reverse 75 percent of our mother side and 25 percent from father okay this is what we are going to learn in the genetics this is what we are going to learn in the genetics okay so today we have finished about the introduction of the genetics so in later on classes that is in tomorrow's class we would be dealing with the mendelian genetics okay so what has uh, grigor john mendel done so why is he regarded as the father of genetics okay from 1822 to 1884 1822 to 1884 he has contributed a lot he died in the year 1884 so he has contributed a lot to the field of genetics but the thing is that the fact is that he was not actually rewarded for that because no one would understand what is this genes what do you mean by genetics what do you mean by heredity what do you mean by variation but later on discoveries led to uh, his uh, led to no let let us all to know about the concept of the heredity and evolution so heredity we are going to deal with the future concepts in the tomorrow's class that is mendelian genetics we are going to deal then what what did mendel do with the pea plants when he was in the monastery and uh, how many laws did he propose law of dominancy law of purity of gametes assortment and their explanation we would be dealing in the next class and after that we would be dealing with one more concept called as sex determination that also we would be dealing in the future classes till then signing off thank you